a nice property of an orthogonal set is that any orthogonal set is independent, as long as it does not contain the zero factor. Intuitively, this is clear. All members point in a different direction, perpendicular to each other, so you can never form one out of the others that point like this. But our intuition is sometimes wrong. Fortunately, it's not so difficult to prove that an orthogonal set is independent. And that's what we are going to do in this video. Suppose we have a set S containing n vectors. And we need no, uh, to have that there uh, are no zero vectors in the set. The set would contain zero vectors, it is dependent immediately. So we assume that there are no zero vectors. Furthermore, we assume that S is an orthogonal set, which means that the inner product of any two vectors equals zero, as long as you do not have the same vector. So that's a second assumption. And then, what we need to prove is that S is independent. So that the only solution of the equation Cn v1 up to Cn vn equals zero is a trivial solution c1 equals zero, c2 equals zero, c3 equals zero, until cn equals zero. Mind, we haven't proved anything yet. We just put assumptions here, and we put here what we need to prove. And then the proof is actually only a few lines. Take the inner product of the equation over here with v1. And we have here a lengthy expansion. And here we have the zero vector inner product with the vector v1, which equals the number zero. But then take a look. v1 in vn equals zero, because they are orthogonal to each other. v1 inner product with vn minus one equals zero. So all of them are zero, except for the first one, where we have c1 times v1 inner product v1. So c1 times length of v1 squared equals zero. So if you have that the product equals zero, then either the first part has to be zero or the second part has to be zero. But if the length of v1 squared would be zero, then the length of v1 would be zero and v1 would be the zero factor. But that's not allowed by our first assumption. That means that we have c1 equals zero. Now, here we took the inner product for with v1, which is a choice. We can do that as well with v2, and we would have as a conclusion c2 equals zero. So, if we go on and on with all the other v1, v2, v3, v4, up to vn, we conclude c1 equals c2 equals to until cn equals zero. So the only solution of the factor equation over here is a trivial solution, which means that s is independent. And that concludes our proof.